Hi everyone, I want to talk to you today about heart racing and there are many things that could be going wrong, why the heart will start racing, but there's a particular one I would like to focus on today, which is called atrial fibrillation. Might be someone close to you have been diagnosed with atrial fibrillation or you yourself, you've been diagnosed with atrial fibrillation or you just read about it online or listening to you know, comments or whatever. Well, let's go on and discuss about this very topic today. It's very common. And if it is this common, then we should be able to find ways to prevent the occurrence. Okay, someone just walks to his or doctor and says, my heart is beating too fast. Many things could be responsible, but if you've been diagnosed with AFib, then let's go. Atrial fibrillation, what is it all about? What are other arrhythmias? Is it different from other arrhythmias? What are the risk factors? What are the symptoms? How about signs at presentation? How do we treat this when it's new? And how do we prevent it with some medications or lifestyle modifications? What are the possible investigations to be done? We're going to take history, do physical examination. We will reveal possible long-term complications. And of course, prevention is cheaper and better than cure. We'll talk about that. Arrhythmias are abnormal heart rates and rhythm and normally it should be sinus which means the electrical activity is propagated by sinoatrial node and through that it will move to what we call AV node and from that bond of his apocalyptic fibers we'll go over this later on and to the ventricles the normal heart rate is between 60 and 100 beats per minute. That is, if at rest and no other factors is influencing that, it is actually faster in children. The newborn could have as high as 110 to 160 beats per minute, and it starts dropping as you grow older. Arrhythmic, no some. People could call it dysrhythmia, will set in when there is abnormal electrical activity from non sinus source, or it could be from a sinus source like sinoatrial node that is misbehaving. It could either be very slow, which is called bradycardia, or very fast, which is tachycardia. It could be within the ventricles or it could be above the ventricle, which is called supraventricular. Today, I'll be talking about a type of supraventricular tachycardia. There are many of them. There is uh, atrial flutter, Wolf, Wolf Parkinson White syndrome, I know, many of them, but I will limit myself to atria fibrillation today. Okay. Um, these two types bradycardia or tachycardia uh, the sinoatrial node is the heart pace maker okay so the sinoatrial node is located at the junction of the superior vena cava and the right atrium and the impulse from that region will be passed through AV node 
that connects the atria to the ventricles electrically. And with the help of bundle of hairs that has two bundle branches, one to each of the ventricle, and a true fascicular branches will connect to what we call Purkinje fibers that will be found within the ventricle to help in the contraction. So the impulse will pass through all those you know, pathways. And then there will be contraction of the ventricle from the impulses reaching it through the final pathway, the Purkinje fiber, from the one propagated by the sinoatrial node. However, those sinoatrial node is the heart pacemaker located at the junction of superior vernacular and right atrium, like I've said. The AV node is not just there for nothing. It has what we call decremental conductivity, which means the higher the impulse from sinoatrial node, the slower the AV node conductivity. It delays impulses by about 0.09 seconds and it receives its input from the right atrium. The AV node on its own has normal intrinsic conduction capability. It could depolarize the ventricles at a slower rate than that of the sinoatrial node. I want, I want that to be clear. When the sinoatrial node at the junction of superior vena cava and the right atrium is propagating impulses, the AV node on its own has its own intrinsic electrical capability to propagate impulses that could make the ventricle to contract at a rate slower than that from the neutral node. So at a rate between 40 and 60 beats per minute. If that has not been the case, the reason why I emphasize that is that if that has not been the case, uh, atrial fibrillation, because the atrial wall would not be pumping enough blood, would just be quivering. It means if the ventricle could not propagate anything on its own, uh, it's likely atrial fibrillation would have been killing more than the way it's you know, killing now. Um, so that is basically the way the electrical impulse is propagated and the path it travels to the ventricle from the junction of superior vena cava and right atrium where the atrial node is to the ventricles. Okay, I, <laughs> I don't know if you like my diagram. I'm not too uh, good at this, but at least you're gonna get the info. Uh, I have the EKG, no hand drawn, and what is important here is that the waves, the P wave, I've highlighted that because that is what we'll base our discussion on today. The P wave is a reflection of atrial depolarization. That is when the atria contract. Okay? And I will also look at the PR interval. That is the time taking for the impulse to reach uh, the ventricle through AV node. And it's usually between 0 0.12 to 0 0.20 seconds. Okay, because we, we in the cause of our interaction, if we have EKG of atrial fibrillation, we will see the correlation between the P wave and the KRS complexes. Why the QRS complex is the ventricular depolarization. And we use the R wave here to determine the rate and rating. Um, if there is prolonged 
PRS. It means there is bundle branch block. We are not talking about that today, so I will limit myself to these few descriptions of the P-Wave and the QRS complex because when the P-Wave is misbehaving, there will be ventricular response. So, let's go on. Atrial contractions or supraventricular tachycardia. Let's explain this together. Atrial fibrillation rapid impulses from some atrial node is overpowered by aberrant automatic foci within the atria or pulmonary veins. Bundle of these transmit impulses from AV node to the apex of the fascicular branches by a bundle branches and that goes to fascicular branches leads to Purkinje and from Purkinje fibers electrical impulses finally reach the ventricles and that will cause the contraction. Atrial fibrillation on the other hand is a rapid irregularly irregular heart rhythm. That is pathognomonic of atrial fibrillation. Brief description of what we are going to deal with is that blood supply you now from the heart goes around the entire body, then the used blood returned to the heart via inferior vena cava and superior vena cava. They empty into the right atrium, from right atrium to right ventricle, right ventricle to pulmonary artery, and reoxygenated in the lungs and back through the pulmonary vein to the left atrium and to the left ventricle and to the aorta and supply the entire body. So we will be able to you know, figure out even before reaching that stage why atrial fibrillation will be a big problem for any human being. Imagine that. That the content that is coming from the vera vena cava and superior vena cava reaching the right atrium could not be pumped completely into the right ventricle because the atrial wall are not doing the job right now. They are just quivering, they are just fibrillating, they are not pumping appropriately because there's abnormal electrical activity going on. So, what do you think will happen to the heart? There will be stasis, there will be cloud formation, there will be less supply, there's hypotension, there's heart failure, there's a possibility of disseminating clot thromboembolism to the brain. And what do you think? Are we afraid of stroke here? Yes. Should we worry about heart failure? Absolutely. So let's go on and dwell more on this. Uh, thanks for watching my video. Very soon, the next stage will be out and we'll start it together. Thank you.